Okay, folks, we're going to have a quick walkthrough on how to calculate a crossover point between a couple of different options in a plant, factory, or some other type of business scenario where you're trying to determine which of a set of fixed costs and variable cost options you would choose at various quantities. This is called a crossover point calculation. I'm going to do this kind of quick so you can go back and watch it as often as you want. First, we're going to take a look at our question. In this case, we have an example where for three different machines we can use at what quantities does it make more sense to use each machine to make our product. And this product sells for $24. We have a fixed cost of $12,000 on the AS27 with a variable cost of $15. The BTR Deluxe has a fixed cost of $55,000 and a variable cost of $8. The Mac Daddy 2000 has a fixed cost of $86,000 and a variable cost drops to $4 per unit. Okay, let's take a look at how to calculate this. I'm going to use Excel just to facilitate making it a little faster, but this could easily be done with paper and pencil and probably wouldn't even require a hand calculator for most folks. Okay, let's take a look at the spreadsheet. Okay, just to show you the formulas real quick to refresh your memory, the break-even point is simply our fixed cost divided by our contribution margin. Contribution margin is the difference between variable cost and our selling price. So our sales price is $15. I'm sorry, if our sales price is $24 and our variable cost is $15, then our contribution is going to be 9 So here we have the variables from the problem that we looked at just a moment ago. We have the first machine at $12,000 fixed cost, the second at $55,000, the third at $86,000. We have a selling price of our product of $24 per unit, which was the same for all of them. Variable cost of $15, $8, $4. and four. Contribution margin, quick, cal easy calculation, 24 minus 15 is 9, 24 minus 8 is 16, 24 minus 4 is 20. You can see the formula. It's a real simple Excel formula, C6 minus C7. And our break-even is our fixed cost divided by our contribution margin. So in this case, fixed cost divided by contribution margin gives us 1333.33. We probably round that up in this case to 1334. And we have the same, a similar result here. 3437 is our break-even point for machine B and machine C. That should be a C there. Our break-even point is 4,300 units, so we don't want to do use machine at all unless we can sell at least 4,300 units. Okay, so let's take a look at our crossover point, and I've put the crossover point underneath the second machine in both cases. So this crossover point is for the comparison between machine A and machine B. So we have fixed cost of A minus B divided by contribution margin of A over contribution margin of B. We'll put a little B there to make that kind of obvious that we're talking about the contribution margin of B. Okay, so we'll take a look at the formula real quick. C5 minus D5 divided by C8 minus D8. Now make sure you put the parentheses in there. It's not going to do the, the math properly. You've got to calculate these subtractions before you do the division problem. Okay, so we have 6142 is the break even, the crossover point between machine A and B, and we have a break-even point, or crossover point, excuse me, of 7750, which is where you'd switch from machine B to machine C. So let's take a look at the profit for each one of those, and we're going to compare A and B, and you can, this is a quick way to prove out the model. We see at quantity 6142, it doesn't matter which machine you have, you get the profit the same on both of them. I've just used a reference there to D10, same thing here, and to calculate profit, real simple formula, quantity times contribution margin, then we're going to take out our fixed cost. Same thing here, quantity times our contribution margin, then we'll subtract out our fixed cost. So we can tell that it's right. This is truly the crossover point. Same thing down here, when we calculate the units under both of these plans, we come out with the exact same profit, $69,000 in profit. So, what do we do at every different quantity point? Well, we know that up to 1,333 units, we're not going to make any because the break-even point on our first machine is 1,333. We don't even break even on any of our machines until we sell at least 1,333 units. 
so we won't do any there. So at 1334 and all the way up to 6142, we're going to use plan A. So we're going to use this machine until we get to 6143 units, which was our crossover point up here. At 6143, we can use either machine because our profits are going to be the same as we've shown here. But the very next unit, it's going to be better to go with machine B. We're going to be in this range for machine B. Okay, and then we're going to be the stay with machine B all the way till we get to 7,750 units. At that point, our profits are going to be exactly the same at $69,000. But anything over $7,750, we're going to switch over and use machine C. So you got to ask the sales department, how many of these things are you going to sell before you can decide which machine you're going to plan to use? And this could take the form of a multi-year analysis as well. You might get a sales forecast that gives you one quantity of units in one year, one quantity of units in a second year, and another quantity of units in the third year. And you need to know whether you can switch machines every year or whether you've got to make this investment and stick with this machine forever. And those are going to be some important decisions to make as well. Okay, hope that helps everybody who had questions on that. Look forward to seeing you in class. Signing off.